Okay. Good morning, everyone, to uh, BC310, Church and Ministry Administration. Thanks to all of you for joining. Let's take a moment to pray and we'll get started. Um, somebody on the online class can pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this morning as we come before your presence this morning. We ask your grace and your presence uh, to teach us and help us to understand, uh, especially regarding church and ministry administration, Lord. We pray that uh, we will be able to grasp and understand it well and also be able to apply this in our practical lives, Lord. Help us to deliver uh, it in the right way, oh God. Help us to have a good time in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, um, last week we were spending our time talking about organizational structure um, and we uh, talked about, uh, just to very quickly go through uh, how to, you know, uh, create a structure or design an organizational structure for our church or ministry um, that makes everything very efficient and, uh, you know, helps people understand who's going to be doing what and coordinating among various ministries and so on. So we kind of shared what we are doing here at All People's Church. Some of this is still you know, being worked upon. It's not fully grown yet. It's still developing and growing, but we have various themes. And then we uh, talked a little bit on uh, on page 14, the bottom of page 14, uh, we talked about you know how we can engage volunteers uh, meaningfully in church. Um, today we go to lesson number five, which is administrative policies, guidelines, and standards. So, well, in this lesson, what I want to um, share with us is um, it is important that everybody working in the organization um, follow the same approach to making decisions. And they, they, uh, we need to know why we are doing certain things. Uh, what should be the right decision? Uh, not from a personal individual preference, but from an organization, from the side of, from the understanding of the, from the perspective of the organization. Right? So example, as a pastor, if somebody comes and says, shall I buy two eggs? I might say yes, I might say no. But, The person or the people need to know why you said yes or why you said no. So that if they were faced to the same question, should you buy two eggs? <laughs> same thing. They should be able to make the same kind of decision. The reasoning should be there. Why you said yes or why you said no. It may be a small thing, simple thing. I'm just making made up an example. But if they don't understand why I said yes or why I said no, they won't be able to reproduce that decision. They'll always say, you go and ask past. <laughs> because only he knows why he said yes for you. But it will be so much better if we communicate with all the people involved. See, this is why you say yes. This is why you say no. If you're faced with this question, should I buy two eggs? Example, how many people are going to eat? <laughs> Uh, do you need, uh, do you have enough money to buy trades? I mean, those basic questions you, you think through in your mind, then based on all that, you say yes or you say no. But that knowledge or that information must be transferred to other people so they also know how to make that decision. Otherwise, they'll always keep coming back to you. Yeah. Should I buy two eggs? Go and ask past. <laughs> you know, they'll always. So that. Communication of those, uh, the the reasoning behind decisions, 
the reasoning behind why we should do something or we should not do something is what we call as uh, is communicated through policies through guidelines and through standards so and this has to be written down it can't be in my mind if it's in my mind others may not know it but if i write it down i put it in a document and i share it can everybody understand oh this is what you must do or this is what you must not do and then there are so many different uh, scenarios so many different uh, situations that come up in uh, the, the, the the running of the church and the ministry so many different situations so obviously we cannot write policies or guidelines or standards for every situation but if we say you know if you give one example and you say for other situations that are similar to this follow the same guideline or this is our church policy in these kinds of situations follow the same thing then people will make those same decisions you know so let's give like one example you know when we started the church and i'll just give one example when we started all, all people's church and the congregations are growing uh, we started getting requests from other ministries saying we'd like to come and make an announcement during the sunday service maybe there was some conference they were having some conference maybe they were having some other event they want to promote the event so obviously uh, you're promoting the event ac across churches so they say can we come we'd like to make uh, an announcement to your congregation about this event now in the beginning uh we said yes but i told them please take only 2 minutes or sometimes i say 5 minutes you know and what happened was we gave 5 minutes for them to come and make an announcement about that it will go on 10 minutes sometimes it'll go on 15 and then if you cannot stop them because you're in the set congregation everybody is watching uh congregation doesn't know that you've told them take 2 minutes or 5 minutes these people have clear going on 10 <laughs> minutes 15 minutes and and I, this actually happened you know so one missions organization came they said we want to talk about this our mission our organization to the congregation and all that make a presentation they said fine we'll give you 5 minutes and this person and he's the head of the organization he's going on 10 minutes 15 minutes and i was feeling very uh, upset but i can't do anything i'll sit quiet and wait for him to get over then i realized okay see this is not going to work this is not practical because one even if we give people 5 minutes they're not following time and we can't go and stop them in middle it's very embarrassing second soon many more church organizations will keep coming we want to make presentation every sunday there will be some presentation some promotion uh, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, keep doing going like this and uh, our main thing on the sunday services worship prayer and word that's it this is the main thing even our own announcements we try to keep it within 5 minutes like whatever you want to put put in the finish it we don't want to make you know waste people's time so then i realized see this thing is not going to work so that time we made a decision so this we call a policy i said and i shared it with our staff said, from now on what this is going to be our church policy that means if anybody comes and asks us can we do promotion our answer will in the service our answer will be no in our service our policy is to only announce our own events and even our own events will be taking only 5 minutes not more than that but if you want to make an announcement we will this is our policy for, and we will say treat everybody equally like this you can come you can keep a table at the back outside the main auditorium and you can do what you want you put your handles you put your posters whatever you want you come you do it and you go only thing over there don't give any handles and people are coming inside the auditorium because then they'll carry it and they will leave it in the order because mess we have to clean it 
you give it and they're going out. So they will take it and go in. So we made it very clear. And then from that time, that is our standard answer to anybody who asks us. We want to do promotion. Can we come and promote our event or anything, our organization? This is see. As a church policy, this is it. Everybody, same thing. You come, you put a table, you put your uh, hand, whatever you want, you put, and give it when people are going out, not when they're coming in. Standard. Okay? So this is an example where you establish a policy. You, and there is a reason why you do it. Okay? So then we, we write it down. So we wrote it down. It's now on our church website. We have a guidelines section. So this is one. So today, and we keep our staff informed. Everybody's informed. So today, when there's a request, they know what to say. And everybody's saying the same thing. You know, not like one person saying, yes, you can come, yes, or we don't know. No. The policy is there. We follow it. Okay. So like that in uh, different areas, we follow the same. We have you know, written policies or guidelines, which uh, people will follow. So it helps everybody, you know, uh, uh, be together and, uh, uh, you know, respond to different situations. So uh, administrative policies, uh, they help serve, establish efficiency, consistency, responsibility, accountability. So that's the reason. You know? So for example, we have a, a policy on reimbursements. We have a, you know, a policy on making purchases for so everyone. We said, look, if you want to buy something, you first have, uh, and if it is more than 5,000 rupees, you have to send a request. You can't just go buy it and then say, you pay me. No, you have to send a request uh, uh, saying, you know, you have to get it approved first. That means you send a request saying we need to buy, example, we need to buy a keyboard for one location. This is how much it's going to cost. This is the link. You send an email request. It has to be approved. So it will come to our accountant. Your copy will come to me. Uh, it has to be approved. Then we will buy it. You cannot simply go buy it and then say, hey, I bought it for church. Please reimburse. It has to be approved. Otherwise, so the reason we, we have that in place is if it is not there, people simply spend money. You won't have any control. Right? They'll go buy it and they say, oh, now, you, now you pay me. Uh, so, so we have put this in place. It's our standard policy. Or before any event, like a conference, uh, a camp, uh, our, practice, our policy, our guideline is whoever is responsible for the event must work a full budget. Yeah? And he must send that budget for approval. The budget has to be approved. Only then they can go ahead and start making those arrangements. If it's not approved, then you know we may not pay for it. <laughs> you know, so and it has to be done in writing. So they they can't just come and tell me, you know, oh we we won't we need so much money to for this conference. No, we can discuss things, but even after we discuss, it has to be put in an email, and it has to come. And it has to be approved. So it's a guideline. Right? That means this is how we are going to do these things. We cannot randomly spend this. Uh, so that's in the area of money. Uh, and then, so we have policies, uh, we have guidelines, uh, even for our different ministry teams, our volunteer teams, uh, there are guidelines on how the teams have to function, how people have to serve in the team. right? And then there are standards, meaning, uh, this is more for the actual work that is done. Example, standards for our media team, standards for the video, uh, how we produce the video, how we produce the media, uh, standards, how things are written for the website, all of these things. And all of these things are documented, they're written. So if any new person joins, we just tell them, hey, please read the guideline or read the standards. So we can all follow the same thing. And so it makes life easier. So. What's the importance of having administrative policies or guidelines and practice standards? Um, it, you know, here's some benefits. It provides guidance 
for the organization, the people working in. So everybody understands how you're supposed to do it. Uh, it clarifies the organization's position on specific issues. Uh, how, what, what, where does the organization stand? Makes it very clear. It becomes a basis for decision making. So other people can also make you know, the same decision. Uh, there is a greater objectivity. That means people know why they're doing it. Consistency, we all do the same thing. Uh, understanding, people understand it. And there is fairness. That means we treat everybody equal. There is no partiality. I, uh, so today, we cannot tell any organization, for you, we give five minutes. For others, we don't. No, we treat everybody the same. There is fairness. Nobody is treated any, with any preference. And it also provides a basis to hold people accountable. That means we can ask questions. Why? Why did you not do this? Or why did you do this? We can ask questions. If the guidelines were structured, and if they didn't follow, we can ask. But if there was no written guideline, then we can't hold them accountable because they'll say, you never told me, or I didn't know. So, no, no, they can't say that because the guideline is written. We can hold them accountable to what they were supposed to do. Right? So this leads us to the next point, which is everything must be written and available. Okay? So uh, if all of this is clearly written, and uh, we document everything, and we remind people over and over again. Right? So uh, I just shared with you the link for us, our uh, our so we have a link, uh, it's apcwo.org slash guidelines. If you go to APC, let me just share this. Um, let me share this. Yeah. You can see it, apcwo.org slash guidelines. Okay. So um, on this web page, we have guidelines for every little thing. I mean, not little thing, but every area of ministry, like book table, child protection, how all these various ministries are being done, uh, uh, various things. These are all guidelines. And anybody who wants to can take it and use it. We tell our people from other churches also, you know, they can take it, they can modify this and use it for their church and ministry. But we have all of these guidelines, uh, some policy statements here, uh, some training documents. We want to train people. And then we have role description. That means uh, this particular role, what is that person's responsibility? So this, all of this is available here on this uh, web page, uh, apcw.org slash guidelines. And uh, uh, we tell people, uh, you know, when, if at any point we want to reference, uh, tell somebody, hey, what should I do, what should I do? We can always send them here. Hey, just read this guideline document, follow that. Yeah. So uh, we make it available for our teams as well. Let me go back to sharing the PDF. Sorry, I've been jumping around. All right. So you can see the PDF now. Um, going back to that point, everything must be written down and available. So we have written everything uh, as far as possible. We try to keep it updated. And um, uh, people can you know, read it and so on. Now let's think about this, you know, what will happen in an organization? Suppose there were no policies, guidelines, and standards. Suppose there was organization, or we are all going to work together. But if there were no policies, no guidelines, no standards established, try to imagine what would be happening in this kind of an organization. Yeah. Um, decision making will be so difficult because people won't know. So what am I supposed to do? 
or why am I supposed to do it? You know, or maybe one or uh, certain people only will be the decision makers. Others, they have to go to them for every decision. And uh, it, it may be also very, uh, you know, uh, erratic. Sometimes they're saying yes, sometimes they're saying no. So people also get confused. What does this organization stand for? What do they, you know, do they say yes or do they say no? Because there are no established policies, no established guidelines or standards. So, yeah, so uh, th these are some things that, you know, some examples. We have uh, guidelines for our staff and consultants. Our workplace policies are included in that. How do we interact with external entities, um, uh, contracts, and lease? So, you know, before we take any place uh, on these, we make sure we have a written contract. So we, we never do things just based on verbal agreement. Because after five months, he'll say, I told you. <laughs> And we'll say, well, I don't remember, you know, all those confusions will happen. We don't know what he said if it's not written down. Okay? So we never, never enter into any contract or any uh, lease uh, uh, without a written document that is signed and kept. We never do that because it can give rise to a lot of uh, problems later on. So even in those, uh, areas so this is the same thing we tell you know i try to advise other pastors and others say sometimes pastors you know they meet somebody in the church uh that person say oh you can use my house for uh, something they just to give a word oh pastor gets very excited oh that person is, is attending my church he said use my church my house for uh, something oh and they go go and start then after some time, this man will say, Pastor, you've been using my house for five months. You didn't give me any rent. Then Pastor will say, but uh, that time you didn't say, five months ago, you didn't ask for rent. He said, no, no, but I was expecting you to give me rent. OK, how much rent? Then he will quote his own price. You know, So it, it leads to unnecessary problems. It is better, even if somebody from the church or anyone known they come and offer something. Okay, let us sit it, sit down, discuss, put everything in writing, then we will start. Then there is no confusion. Everything is clear, clean, and people are happy. Right? So without an, an agreement, without a contract, we don't you know, enter into any kind of engagement. So that's part of you know, our policy. Uh, it's very important. This is how we work. Um, then there are guidelines for volunteer teams, various specific uh, teams, uh, and so on. There are guidelines. And uh, the guidelines basically say, you know, how should things be done? You know? And the guideline documents are also helpful when you're training new people. Uh, and it may make sure that there is quality and consistency, regardless of who does the work, the output should be good. And it should be the same standard. Right. So having these guidelines and uh, uh, doc uh, operating documents are very, very important. So I keep reminding our people, hey, please write it down, document it, please. Uh, from time to time, we have to update those documents as uh, we keep improving. Um, the same thing is true for how we do a different work, uh, like graphics. Yeah? So the, the way the, you know, every week we are producing graphics, if we don't follow certain standards, then week to week things will look very different. Suddenly it's this size, suddenly it's that big size, suddenly, you know, why are these people not being consistent in the way they're doing their work, the videos or the graphics or books or so on. So if we have standards established, It'll all look very nice. For example, all of our APC books, right? It, we follow a standard. The book cover has to be like this. The name has to be here. The back cover has to be like this. It, uh, these things, the inside cover has to be like this. So we have a written uh, standard. Right? 
So it doesn't matter who joins the team, they read it and they follow. So it doesn't matter who's doing the work, the end result is, okay, the book looks the same. There's a consistent look and feel to all the books we print. Right? So it makes uh, things look good. Um, so similarly with the videos and graphics and so on. So the importance of having standards. So now our question, uh, and which sometimes has come up, is believers may view policies, guidelines, and standards as legalism. You're not giving any place for the Holy Spirit to give me some inspiration to do something different. Oh, I have to feel I have to follow only this. Why can't I just be led by the Spirit and do as I please, or as a, I feel led by the Spirit? You know. So, uh, how do we help? First of all, how do we help people accept that there are policies, standards, and guidelines? And how do we give room for the leading of the Holy Spirit when we have set certain policies, standards, and guidelines? So, that, these are questions. So. The first thing is, uh, the first question is when we help believers understand that, understand why we are having these policies. It is to help us become better. It is not to control us. It is not to, uh, uh, you know, put a law upon us. But it is to help us all function well, to help in decision making, uh, to help the work, you know, um, be of a certain quality. Right? So the standards are actually helping us. It's not controlling, it's helping us. But within the work we do, as long as you're following the guidelines, you are still listening to the Holy Spirit. You're still being led by the Spirit. Right? So example, think, think about the graphics person. If he's going to do some graphics for a certain event, he can listen to God. He can, how he does the graphic is fine. But he has to follow certain standards. The picture has, you know, it has to be this size, it has to be this uh, dimensions, this big, and so many pixels, etc. All that he has to follow that. But within that, there's room for freedom to improve, do what you're doing. Uh, so uh, the standards and policies they are actually helping us. They're serving us. They're not controlling us. And within that, there is room for uh, creativity and uh, freedom to do things. Is it okay? You are with me so far? Question? Okay. Got it. Any question? Yes, sir. Go ahead. As you go with the women, so now you were told that we purchased a so somebody in the congregation offered uh, a, a place for they, did they say they, they're going to give it for rent, or they just said you can use yes, it? You can use it. They did they uh, So when they offered it to the, when they spoke to the pastor and said you can use it, they did not say give rent. They just said use it for the church. Then they use and, uh, yeah. They use some amount that they hold it. Then uh, the person is and very serious. And the hotel is taking charge. And after the decision, then I wanted to go and meet him like an older body with that nine point eight inch guitar up there. Then uh, the daughter didn't allow meet far. Mm -hmm. Then it happened, uh, then it was right now. So what has what has happened is the church has taken the place, invested into that place by doing all the interior work, soundproofing, everything. But nothing has been signed. So we've done all the work. 
after you've done the work, some problems happen. Then I told them still some other people. Then she told I gave some of the things. Then I'll give them. She was asking the money for how much I will give it. So after everything was done, they said you start paying rent. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not going to pay. Then after that, the repayment, then she started to ask the rent. So they kept increasing the rent. Yes. And nothing has been signed. Oh, so they can ask for anything. Yeah. For three years, so you may have Then you see, I told him something. She asked for like, so they're asking for lots of money. Yeah. Mm. Then uh, the I think is then she thought, you know, much time and the money. And then when you're not, uh, they're asking for some huge amount. Yeah. If you're not able to pay, leave the place. No, oh, that's the So because of the things that are. So that's the same thing. And then they must go to go and ask that, you know, that father was very good at it. So the root, the main problem is there was no agreement signed yes. before taking the place. Nothing was written. So they could really, uh, once you've gone inside, once you've done all the work, interior work, they can ask, uh, yeah, they just kept asking more and more money. And uh, when you were not able to pay the money, they said, leave the place. And they never paid anything for what you've done inside. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't pay anything. Not so so remove it. Yeah. yeah. It's a huge loss. So it's a big loss. I think that's thank you for sharing that, but that's a big lesson for all of us. Yes. That um, yeah, so before we go into any place, we have to. to even if it's somebody from the congregation, okay, we have to have a written rental agreement. Discuss, write it down, only then go and say. Because people can also change. Yes. Yeah. And even though if they're from the congregation, so we told them we have to pay the rent. They misunderstood that because they were dealing with the rent. Yes, you people are asking. Mm. They are telling them, anyway, that was a little bit, it took a long time to get it. Whatever the amount transfer they're putting in, I told them. Yeah. 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 Any questions from online students? Any thoughts? Uh, we just had one of us here sharing a practical experience as a pastor, uh, you know, because there was no rental agreement, there's a lot of problems that happened later on with somebody from the congregation itself. All right, so what we are stressing is the importance of you know having policies, guidelines, standards, and having them written down. And you know, I'm just sharing some, uh, you know, from from what what we practice that we never take a place, you know, without a rental agreement. We don't just do things based on people's uh, words and so on, because as, as, as was shared in this example, uh, things can change and, you know, it can put everybody else into trouble. So let's just move forward. Um, some other things on the same uh, topic. Um, yeah, so this, this, this whole idea that, uh, that uh, having policies, guidelines and standards is legalism uh, is something that we, we will have to respond to from among the con among our staff or among the people the congregation we need to let them know that uh, these policies guidelines and standards are important they're for our benefit and they're not intended to control us so people you know we, we have to help them understand why we have it and uh, and there is freedom as long as you don't uh, do things that are detrimental to the organization, you know, within within that space, you know, each one is free to serve. 
So uh, let me just share some other examples, you know, and, and, and many of these things we learned, uh, I, 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 we learned over time, sometimes we learned through our own mistakes. Uh, so, you know, uh, for example, um, uh, and this has to do with how do we work with other organizations, especially uh, I'm thinking of organizations from overseas. Okay. So one of the, and I'm just sharing some practical examples. So one of the decisions we made at uh, All People's Church when we started was uh, we will not be dependent on any money from overseas, from outside India. We're going to do everything with the funds that we have within here that comes through you know, our own people within India. And we're going to operate like that. So that was a decision we made even before we started the church, that this is how we're going to do it. It's going to be a 100% indigenous organization. Uh, we will not receive any money from outside. Now, uh, so that was that was a thought and that was a policy. Uh, thing, and we, we followed that. But then, uh, just to share some what happened, and uh, maybe a few years in, like maybe about when we were in our third year or fourth year, and I don't remember exactly, we had uh, a, a big church from overseas, from the US. The person, I mean, th there's some contact, and they were willing to give money to uh, do some work in, in our city. And uh, I think it was like, you know, uh, if I remember correctly, the, the goal was like to start some sort of a coffee shop or some urban ministry, like in the city, something that's relevant for the city and all that. So, so that was like an opportunity coming to us. But the question was, how are we going to work? Okay. And one of the things that was very clear was uh, that for me, I had to be very careful that, okay, if somebody wants to come and do something in, in, in Bangalore, it's up to them. If they want to work with us, fine. But we want to be very clear that they are not going to take over the leadership of what we are doing. So that was one example where I simply wrote back and said, see, if you want to give money to do something here, that's fine. But we want to be very clear that uh, the control of all people's church will not come under that big, you know, that big church. There's a big mega church from the US. And we will be running by ourselves. And so I made it very clear, and then that actually ended everything. Like they didn't take it forward from there. They just left it. Yeah. And so we never went forward. So like that, we've had a couple of other experiences where we've had organizations from overseas come. And um, I had to be very clear as a policy that, you know, you can be, they can come and you can, you know, if you want to attend uh, or people search, you're welcome to attend. If you want to serve our policies, the leadership of every team will be our own people, indigenous. Because what I observed, and this happened in the past, was they'll come, they'll do something, and after two years, they leave. And uh, when they leave, uh, if they were leading that ministry, everything is gone. And then all the time and effort that we've invested is all gone. So then I, I learned from those mistakes, and then we put a policy in place that any ministry we start, even if they come to serve in that ministry, like I'm talking about people from overseas, the leadership will be our local leadership. Somebody from our church will lead it. So that if they go, and which most often they will leave after two years, they'll go back. Because we are leading it, we can continue that work. You know? So that was something we, because we learned through mistakes, and then we put that policy in place that, okay, this is how we function. If anybody from overseas wants to come and do something, this is how it will happen. But then many of them don't like that because when they come, they want to lead it. But this is sorry, that's not the way we will work. 
If it's something you're doing with us, we will leave the work. You work under our leadership. Because very often, after two years, three years, they will pack up and go back. Then what will happen to that ministry, you know, uh, if they are leading? So that's, again, a policy that in how we work with overseas ministries. You know, these were some learnings, you know, lessons we had to learn uh, and put and therefore put certain policies in place in working with overseas ministries. So um, we had to be careful in that area. And also, you know, partnering with other ministries, uh, we are careful that you know, we will bless them and you know, how they wish to work with us, it's fine. But we will not interfere in their functioning. And we will not let them interfere in how we function. So we will, we will not go in and start telling them how to do things. No, that is, we respect their, that organization's way of working. And we expect them also to respect how we work. So then we can work together without interfering in each other's internal matters. Be very careful in those things. So if, if you know when we have these policies, guidelines, and standards, then it also helps us work with other organizations, whether they are overseas or other organizations within our country. It's very clear. We don't interfere in their matters. They won't interfere in our matters. But we're working together for the same, for the cause of God's kingdom. So we partner with many other mission organizations around the country, but it's very clear how we work with them. Any questions uh, on, on this thing, on this subject? From uh, any on from those are online. Yes, comments. Please go ahead. Yes, Pastor. It's not a question. It is an experience. There are. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. In two thousand and seventeen. We happened to rent an institution, uh, uh, an institution like a school that was failing from its owner. And uh, why I'm so appreciative of these courses that of this very courses that uh, we learned the hard way. Uh, maybe I should mm. say that we learned the lesson the hardest way. The owner. We leased the, the entire property to us, and it was a contract of five years, and it was collapsing. It was indeed, indeed in a limbo. So we made foolish contracts with them. Uh, they gave us the accounts. We had to maintain the, the name of the school, and we maintained the accounts. So she wrote a document, and she was, looks can be so confusing. She was a pastor. So we, she made for us a document and we were allowed to sign money from the accounts. So this was the biggest blunder we made. After some time when money was on the account, like uh, around, it was not much, but it was much on our side then. It was like 25,000 USD. She, out of the blue, removed us from the accounts. We had no access on the accounts. <laughs> and uh, when we were like, and she always was monitoring the accounts down there because the person was the one who had opened up the account. Her number was down there and we wouldn't see because foolishly, we, when we were starting, when we were writing on the checks, we thought that everything was under control. By the time mm. we brought in our lawyer, the lawyers of the bank and her lawyers, we were tossed, we were down under the carpets. They said, no, this is our client. She gave us a document that you would sign on the account, but now she has written another one. So that it took us a while to survive that one. So even when you're going into the accounts, I mean, into the contract, you must have genuine, genuine lawyers uh, to make for you the legal documents. and. Uh, those people who can't change themselves usually when you're in a foreign country or you might buy off somebody but when that person is also working for the other organization when you don't know they usually put there some tricks so i'm so delightful that uh, maybe it is now six seven years down the road but we are still suffering from that very loss <laughs> oh, because 
because it was a, a very big institution, but it was collapsing. It was like a, entering like a hundred uh, thirteen thousand per month. I mean per 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 four years, thirteen thousand USD. I mean per four months. But uh, by the time mm. we left after two years, it was in sixty thousand. So you see how much. Wow. <laughs> how much we mm. we put our heads down to the ground because of foolishness in making the contracts so thank you so much uh, and i think my colleagues mm. learn from that it is tentatively mm. always clear that they should make contracts with genuine people and from people who are educated otherwise they will be crying in the darkness one day thank you pastor yeah. thank you thank you Collins, for sharing that um, experience yeah i think that's a uh, very valid point, uh, which adds to what, you know, uh, so I was only saying you should have a contract, but I think Colin said, you know, very, very important. Uh, make sure the contract is right. Uh, check the contract. Have some, you know, qualified people check the contract. Because even when we write it, I mean, even if you have a written contract, uh, it has to be tight. Things cannot be changed, modified. We have to be very careful because, uh, you know, not everybody, even though we are church, we are ministry, not everybody is going to treat us kindly. You know, sometimes they take advantage of us because we are the church or because we are a Christian ministry. They know that we are going to try to be kind and honest and, and they'll use, take the advantage of us uh, from that perspective. So very valid point. Uh, uh, contracts must be checked and legally. Verified, yeah. Thank you. So um, think about these things when, uh, when uh, for your church, for your organization, uh, it is hard work. You know, it is hard work. You know, having these policies, having these guidelines, having these standards. It's not easy. You know, uh, it's so so much easier that oh, don't worry, just trust everybody and do it. But actually, that might get us into a lot of trouble, uh, as Colin Collins was sharing. So although it is hard work, uh, we must make sure that you know we put everything down in writing, and then it'll save us and save uh, all the others involved in the ministry. Okay, uh, so let's take a little break now for ten minutes. Come back, uh, and then we we'll get into our next uh, lesson, lesson number six on uh, systems and uh, processes, and just we'll go through on how do we set up good systems and processes. Uh, within the organization. Yeah. Thank you. Let's come back in 10 minutes, please.